Hello, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, we'll be doing question 7 of November 2023, question paper mathematics paper 1. And these are derivatives. Uh, so, let's go. 7.1. Determine f prime, the derivative of f, from first principles. If f of x is defined by negative 4x squared. So, they're saying find the derivative of f. From first principles, if f of x is defined by that, or f of x is that. So, what do they mean by first principles? So, they are saying that, find that derivative using the, the derivative definition. That's what they are saying. What is the derivative definition? The derivative definition says that the derivative of a function f, right, the derivative of a function f is equal to the limit h goes to 0 of f at x plus h minus f of x all over h. This is the definition that we wanted to use. Right? Okay. So we're going to use this definition. But what I need to find first is f at x plus h. So I'm given that f of x is equal to minus 4 x squared. So if I want f at x plus 4, it's going to be equal to minus 4 into x plus h all squared, which is equal to 1, minus 4 into x squared, multiply this bracket out, this, yeah, these two brackets, plus 2hx plus h squared. So your f at x plus h is equal to 1, it's equal to minus 4 x squared minus 8hx minus 4h squared. This is your this is your f at x plus h here. That's what you have there. Then now we come to our definition. So our definition says that f, the derivative of f at x is equal to the limit as h goes to 0, right, of f at x plus h. f at x plus h is this thing here. So it's equal to minus 4 x squared minus 8 hx minus 4 h squared minus minus 4x squared all over h. So f prime at x is equal to what? The limit as h goes to 0 of what? Of 4 minus 4x squared minus 8hx minus 4h squared plus 4x squared all divided by this and that go away. So we are left with f prime to be equal to what? The limit as h goes to 0 of minus h x minus 4 h squared, right? All over h. That's what we are left with, right? <clears throat> then we take out the common factor, which is h on both sides. So you have your derivative equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of what? Of h outside you're left with minus 8x minus 4h all over h. So this and that <coughs> go away. So f prime at x is equal to what? The limit as h goes to 0 minus 8x minus 4h. Then, once you remove that, you can allow your h go to 0. So, your f prime at x is equal to what? Minus 8x minus 4 0, which is equal to minus 8x. Therefore, f prime at x is equal to which means the derivative with respect to x of our function f is equal to minus 8x. I hope it is clear. I hope we make no mistakes. So, from here, we move on to what? To 7.2. So, they want you to find the derivative of f with respect to x if f of x is defined 
So, we're not using first principles here. Alright? So, <coughs> f of x is equal to what? 2x cubed, alright? Minus 3x. So, if we want derivative of x, we know how to derive. Say 3 times 2. So, we have 3 times 2, which is that 3 times 2. Then, on that 3, we subtract 1. Minus, <coughs> so you have a 1 here, you know. 1 times 3, so you have 1 times 3. On that 1 there, we subtract 1 as well. So f prime of x, because this time this is just 6, x, 3 minus 1 is 2. Minus 1 times 3 is 3, x is 0. So this is 1 that we can just is a derivative 6x squared minus 3 that's your f prime at that point they give you another one they say determine what determine 7.2.2 the derivative with respect to x of this thing here 7 times the cube root of x squared Plus 2 raised x to x raised minus 5. Right? Okay. So what do we do from here? Uh, the problem with this one is that we have a root. So if you have a root, it's a cube root here. If you have any sort of root, you can't derive. You must first simplify them by writing them in a in exponential, not exponential, but in a power form. Or say that. So, write them in a power form. So, what do we do? We say, okay, when the derivative of x with respect to x of this thing, which is 7 times, how do you write this? So, this is equal to x raised 2 over 3 plus 2 x raised minus 5. So, once it gets here, looks like it is ready to be, deri to, to, to be derived, right? How do we do that? So, the derivative of this thing is equal to what? 2 over 3 times 7. So, 2 over 3 times 7, right? Like we did here. So, you put your x to 2 over 3, subtract 1, plus Minus 5 times 2, so it's minus 5 times 2, so the x is minus 5, subtract 1. So this is equal to what? 14 over 3, x raised minus 1 over 3. I think uh, minus 10, x, what is minus 5 minus 1? Minus 6. So you can leave it here. Or you can simplify it by saying 14 over 3, x1 over 3, minus 10, so your x to the power of 6, and go further by saying d the derivative of that thing, which is 7, uh, cube root, x squared, plus 2x raised minus 5, is equal to what? to 14 over 3 um, cube root of x right cube root of x minus 10 over x to the power 6 and so it looks like this so we just yeah looks like something similar to this I hope it is correct so we move on to 7.3. Um, I'll clean the board so that we can have space for 7.3. So now we're doing 7.3. 7.3 read as follow. For which values of x will the tangent? 
to F, which is this, have a positive gradient. So they're asking for which values of x will it tangent to this thing have a, a positive gradient. So if you look at this, there's some sort of cubic, it's negative, so you have a shape similar to this or uh, along this form. Right? So if it's negative, you'll have something along this form. They're asking now for which values of x, right, will the tangent to this function of ours have a positive gradient. Right? So, uh, you can see here, the gradient here, this thing is decreasing, so the gradient is negative all the way. Then here at the turning point, the gradient is zero. Right? So, but the gradient here, this thing is increasing here, so the gradient is positive. Zero there, but it's going down again here, so it's decreasing again here. Right? So our cubic function is decreasing here, decreasing here, decreasing here again. So <clears throat> if you want to draw a tangent that will have a positive gradient, which means it should be, it should be between this point, between this point, and that point. So if you can find <clears throat> the x value of this turning point and the x value of that turning point, right, of a cubic function. Then you will be able, you will know those x values that you found. It should be between them because this is how a cubic function looks like. A cubic function looks like this. So if you draw a tangent, a tangent will ha will have the same coordinates as a function at, at, at a point. So which means if all these points between this point. Between the turning point and the turning point, which is a gradient will be positive, which is what you're looking for. So, how do you do this? You must go and find those x coordinates of the turning point. Right? Once you find them, bet between them, that's where you are going to get a positive gradient. So, how do you do that? So, okay, the derivative, you find the x coordinate of the turning point, right? How do you find the x coordinate of the turning point? Do you know where the turning point is? I said the, the gradient there at the turning point is zero here, and the gradient there is zero, right? And you know that a derivative gives you a gradient at a point. So if I find f prime on x, this gives me a gradient at a point. So a derivative gives me a gradient at a point. So let's find the derivative of that thing. So f prime x squared to what? It's going to be um, 3 times negative 2, 3 times negative 2 x, and that 3 is subtract 1, plus 8 x is 1 minus 1, because if you have 1, 1 times 8 is 8, then you subtract 1 there. So f prime on x is equal to what? It's equal to minus 6 x squared plus 8. Right? So, this derivative of ours gives us a gradient at a point. That's what you said. It gives us a gradient at a point. So, we want the turning points because we know between these turning points, this is where we're going to have the positive gradient. Right? Because between this point and that point, between between this x, the x coordinate of this point and the x coordinate of that point, that's where we're going to have a positive gradient. So what do we do? We say, okay, <clears throat> at this point and that point, we know what the gradient is. The gradient is zero, right? Which means this part is zero. So we we'll look looking for the x values, which gives us the gradient of zero. Straightforward. So we say, okay, this gives us a gradient at a point, but at our point of interest that we're looking for, or our points of interest that we're interested in. We know that the gradient, which is this part, is what? Is zero. So you have um, zero is equal to minus six x squared plus eight. So six x squared is equal to eight divided by six divided by six. So x squared is equal to eight then over six. Then take the square root of this, take the square root of that, plus or minus. So 
your x is equal to plus or minus um, we say 4 over 3 which is equal to x is equal to plus or minus what 2 over root 3 this is the x value these are x values so you know that the one on the right the x value there should be what should be like 2 over root 3 and the one over here should say something along the negative 2 over root 3 so between these two that's why you're going to have a positive gradient so you can say <coughs> Uh, you would have a positive gradient for x is between minus 2 over root 3 and 2 over root 3. Done. That's why you have a positive gradient. Or you could have just said that you know that you, you want your gradient to be positive, right? Which means you, I said this gives you a gradient at a point. So you could have just said, my gradient, I want my gradient to be positive, which is you have what? Minus 6 x squared plus 8 is greater than 0. This is question 1. This is question 1. You solve it the way you normally solve the equation 1. Then you find the critical values, draw your, your function, because uh, when you find, you find that your critical values will be what? x is equal to plus or minus 2 over root 3. Then do that drawing thingy. So you say you have what here? Um, minus 2 over root 3. Here you have positive 2 over root 3. There you plot it. Looks like this. This is your gradient function here. This is your gradient function. You want weight is greater than 0, which is above this line, which is above here. What are the x values? It's these x values in between here. So your x, a element of what? Minus 2 over root 3 to 2 over root 3. These are the x values, which are the same as those ones. Or 1, we say x, uh, x what? Is less than 2 over root 3, greater than minus 2 over root 3. So you could have said the same thing there as well. So I'll just say here x less than 2 over 3, greater than minus 2 over root 3. It's the same stuff. Then you're done with question 7. So we'll move to question 8, which is the cubic function, which doesn't look very, well, it's just straightforward by the way. So I hope this is clear to you as it is to me.